Okay. Hopefully we're back again. And if you're still watching it after all these sort of little things, <laughs> I mean, for you, if you're not watching it live, to be honest, it's just going to be a case of us freezing like this and then suddenly coming back over here. So it won't be a problem for you. If you're watching it live, it'll be a bit of downtime. But on the feed that will be uploaded, there'll just be a little jump in between us sort of resetting ourselves. So you'll still get the information. Um, so we've got our plot in the field around a, a magnet. Um, so we can plot the magnetic field lines using a plotting compass, always out of the north into the south. The key bit about this that I wanted to point out is where the magnetic force is strongest is near the poles of the magnet. And the reason it is strongest near the poles of the magnet is because the field lines are closest together there. The closer they are the field lines together, the stronger the magnetic force. Uh, so that's what you can tell for that. Another thing you may be asked to do is plot the magnetic field around uh, a wire. So if you've got a wire and you pass an electric current through the wire, it generates a magnetic field. So if we had a wire that was uh, like this pen, goes down into uh, the page. So if my wire was going down into the page and current was flowing through inwards, the magnetic field lines are actually uh, in circles around it, like ripples. Uh, if you threw a stone into a pond, it would uh, be like that. Now, actually, I'm going to flip the, the direction of the current to make this a bit easier on myself. But the magnetic, uh, sorry, the, the electrical current is coming out. Uh, the wire is that spot in the middle, and the electrical current is coming out of the board. It's difficult when you're drawing these diagrams because you have to represent things in 3D in a 2D uh, plane because you're doing it on a flat bit of paper. So that's quite crucial to understand that things may be coming out or going into you, uh, which you might actually uh, be able to draw or have to draw. In this case, uh, we have uh, a wire coming outwards. And actually, as that wire comes out, the current's flowing out. We use something called Ampere's right-hand rule. Ampere's right-hand rule, before we get to Fleming's left-hand rule, I know we've got to use both our hands for this, but involves our, our right hand. You make a sort of uh, curved... Uh, grip like that, as if you were gripping something, but you don't use your thumb, your thumb points uh, upwards. So, in this case, if you've got it, and your thumb uh, is gripped around the wire, then if the wire is coming out, it would show us the direction of the field lines. And you probably can't see that on the camera, but if the current's coming out to you, my grip is going around in this direction. So it means the field lines, the field is travelling in a anti-clockwise direction because if I grip the wire like that put my thumb in the direction of the current then it goes around uh, in a anti-clockwise direction. That's Ampere's right hand rule for doing the magnetic field around a wire uh, or a current flowing through a wire. The next sort of hand rule you've got to learn is Fleming's left hand rule. Now Fleming's left hand rule involves your left hand for obvious reasons and uh, you have to put it, what I always do is I always make like a gun. So you make like a gun sort of shape as if you were a kid. And then you put your second finger, uh, the finger below, at 90 degrees to that gun, sticking outwards. What these things mean, and this is what you've got to remember, and there's a key to remembering it, is the first finger, the finger that points, is the field. The first finger you put in the direction of a magnetic field. So this shows the direction of the magnetic field. In the case of this drawing up here, the magnetic field is going upwards. Um, so, your first finger goes in the direction of the magnetic field. Then your second finger, your second finger, goes in the direction of the electrical current. And when we use this, we'll show it on the next slide, uh, you have to have a wire with the current passing through in the middle of a magnetic field. If you place a wire with a current flowing uh, through it in a magnetic field, there will be a movement or a motion. And your thumb is the direction of the motion. So this is what this is used for. It's usually used to find the direction of movement or motion of a wire which is placed in a magnetic field. For example, this one here. Now, as I say, what you've got to remember is uh, arrows they draw in the di diagonal are often meaning outwards. They're not meaning sort of diagonally down, they're meaning that's supposed to be coming out at you. You just can't draw a 3D object on a 2D plane. So in this case, the field is going across in this direction. So I place my first finger in the direction of the field. The field lines are here, flowing along that way. So they're flowing across there. 
the current in this instance is moving down. So I place my, my second finger in the downwards direction. So the field is going across there, my second finger is pointed down in the direction of the current. And as you can see, my thumb now is pointing out at you on the camera, meaning the movement or motion is towards you. So that wire uh, would actually be forced outwards in a, in a motion towards you if a current was passed through and it was placed in this magnetic field. So realistically, if I was to be in that exam hall, uh, I want to see when we get a question on Fleming's left hand rule, and it is likely one will come up because it's just been added to the GCSE specification for those doing combined science. Uh, I want to see people doing this in the exam. Left hand, if you can't tell your left from your right, look at your left hand like that. When you're looking at it, it makes an L. So that's your left hand. Point it out like that, like a gun, with the second finger at 90 degrees to it. So all your fingers are at 90 degrees to each other. Your first finger goes in the direction of the field. Your second finger in the direction of the current. And your thumb shows the direction of movement or motion. The one tricky bit with this is sometimes they call the movement or the motion, they call it the force, the force that's generated, because the force pushes the, the motion. Don't get confused with force and the first finger. The first finger, Fi, is the field, Fi. Okay? So if they talk about force, they're talking about movement or motion, uh, and that's the direction of the thumb, or the direction the thumb is in, in Fleming's left hand rule. So it leads to this thing called the motor effect. Uh, the motor effect is where you use Fleming's left hand wall. What it says is if you place uh, a straight wire in a magnetic field, it will experience a force uh, because of the magnetic field generated by the wire and the magnetic field of the magnet that is between them. So this is a magnet, north and south are here, so the field lines, the direction of the field always goes, just like here in a bar magnet, from north to south, here it will go from north to south. We've just split the magnet in half, it will flow from north to south, straight across that gap. The current is flowing uh, this way, from uh, right to left, as you're looking at it. So the force felt here will be downwards. Now the reason that is, is because this field, as I say, it's at a diagonal. So it's actually going into the board. Now you have to get into really weird positions when doing this. It's, it's hard to orientate yourself correctly. But the field is going uh, into the board, in this case, uh, because, as I say, the diagonal means into the board. It doesn't mean it's like that. It means it's actually going in. So I'm going to point directly into the board. Then I need to make my second finger in the direction of the current. So I have to turn my hand upside down to do it in the direction of the current. And now my thumb is pointed down, showing me the motion or the force is travelling downwards. So the trick to this is getting that 3D representation. If it's in the diagonal, it's moving in. So I'm pointing into the board. My second finger in the direction of the current, which is right to left. So I have to flip my hand upside down to a weird, uncomfortable position. But it does show that the motion is downwards. My thumb is pointing down, hence the motion, the force, is downwards in this example. Okay. So, if we take a wire, which if we pass a current through a wire, it generates a magnetic field, and we coil that wire up into a long straight coil, uh, we call that a solenoid. 